as one. I'll take that as a yes. During the time of the dragons in Alagesia, their riders ruled the land in peace and prosperity for the longest time. But as time went by, the riders' arrogance got the best of them, and they began to fight among themselves for power. Sensing their weakness, a young rider named Galbatorix came to power after destroying all dragon riders and dragons alike. Do not prolong my suffering. Now, the land of Alagesia is ruled by King Galbatorix, who grows restless as his valuable stone is stolen from him by a young girl named Arya, a princess of the Elf Kingdom, Elesmera, and the ally of the Vardan, the freedom fighters who fled to the mountains after their rebellion was crushed by Galbatorix. Galbatorix gave the order to bring back what was stolen from him to his second in command, Durza, who is a ruthless, evil, dark sorcerer. He hunts her down and intercepts her in the middle of the forest. Durza's men shoot down Arya's two guards, and she is surrounded by a fire that was magically created by Durza. He asks her to give him the stone, promising to let her live, but she uses her magic to cast the stone far away. The stone appeared near a forest and was found by a poor farm boy named Aragon, who set out to hunt a deer. Aragon carries the stone to the town and is about to trade it for some meat, but the butcher refuses to have it. Instead, he warns that it belongs to the king and to put it back where he found it, or else the whole village will be in danger. Aragon returns to his uncle, Garo, and his cousin, Roran, who is about to leave to serve in the army. He hides the stone and talks with his cousin, who gives the news about his departure. Garo asks him if he wishes to leave, but Aragon tells him he likes his life on the farm. The night after Roran left, the stone, later discovered to be a dragon egg, hatches into a small dragon. Excited to see the creature, Aragon touches it and triggers a magical reaction that alerts many people, including Arya, who is captured in the dungeon of Durza. He comes to her room and asks her about it, but she was not willing to tell him, so he used his magic to see into her thoughts and discover the identity of the new rider. Aragon wakes up the next morning along with his dragon and wakes up with a mark on his hand. At the same time, Galaptorix receives news from Durza who undermines the situation, saying it hatched to a mere farm boy. But Galbatorix tells him that his enemies will have hope of challenging his rule if they hear about the new rider. He tasks Durza in dealing with Aragon and warns him not to fail him. Durza uses his dark magic and summons the Razak, dark creatures only loyal to him, and orders them to kill the rider. At night, Aragon goes into town and hears Brom, a former dragon rider who is thought of as a drunk man who tells tales talk about the time of dragon riders and how Galbatois betrayed all of the riders before him. Captivated by what he heard the previous night, Aragon goes out to the field with his small dragon the next day. He tried to make it fly, and after a few attempts, he was successful. The small dragon goes into the sky and disappears, but the mark on Aragon's hand is glowing. Then, the small dragon magically transformed into a young female dragon in the sky while she was flying. And you are my rider. The dragon comes back and lands next to her rider. Aragon is scared at first, but he gets closer and she communicates with him through his thoughts. She confirms what Brom is saying and introduces herself as Saphira. That night, Aragon goes to visit Brom and demands to know more about the dragons, but Brom dismisses him thinking he is just a naive boy. Then, after hearing some noise when passing through, Aragon approaches the house of the butcher and carefully looks inside. The Razak were interrogating the butcher who gave them the location of Garo's farm. Aragon runs as fast as he can to save his uncle, but Saphira grabs him and flies away. She tells him it was too late for his uncle, but he kept struggling with her. After being all over the place, Saphira puts him down at the far. Aragon discovers the body of his uncle and unleashes his anger on Saphira, blaming her for Garo's death. He orders her to stay away and she obeys. Shortly, Brahm appears at the farm and discovers the true identity of Aragon after he tries to attack him. Brom senses the upcoming danger and tells him they should leave, but Aragon refuses to go anywhere until he buries his uncle. Brom quickly burns the body of his uncle and warns Aragon about what will happen if both of them are found. Brom puts Aragon on a horse and they ride into the forest. Aragon foolishly kept talking about taking on the Raza and killing Durza, but Brom pointed out the ridiculous idea of a 17-year-old taking on merciless killing spirits and an evil shade 
possessed by demonic spirits. Then, he asks him to call his dragon, but Aragon tells him that she is probably far away. Brom, being a former dragon rider, tells Aragon not to lie and reveals that he knows Aragon communicates with his dragons through his thoughts. Aragon calls Saphira and asks her to find them. She tells him she never left and immediately arrives in the forest. Aragon apologizes for his outburst and she accepts. Then, Brom analyzes her stature and deduces she is a fine young dragon who is ready for a ride. But Aragon is unwilling to ride her after his failure the last time. Brom tells him that a dragon will not hatch until it senses the presence of its riders and the Varden are going to need riders if they are going to have any hope of defeating Durza and the king. Now that Aragon is a dragon rider, he has become the ultimate target because if a dragon is killed, the rider can survive. But if a rider dies, so does his dragon. Because the easiest way for the king to destroy your dragon is to kill you. Meanwhile, Durza magically appears between his men, the Urgals, men with a large physical stature who are guards of the king and punishes their leader for letting the boy get away and orders them to bring the boy's head. Bronn and Aragon begin a five-day ride to reach the river town of Daret as Saphira watches over them and looks out for their enemies. In the middle of their ride, they hear screams of women and they approach to see the Urgles terrorizing some farmers. Aragon wants to stop them, but Brom forbids him saying he is not ready. When Aragon kept being stubborn, Brom prepared a training session to teach him a lesson where he easily beat the overconfident young rider. In the very early morning, Brom and Aragon arrive at the village of Dariot and leave the horses to travel on foot. Brom instructs Aragon to come back after getting some food and not to speak with anyone. Aragon sees a young archer who wears a black cloak from afar and enters one of the houses to escape, where he ends up meeting a fortune-telling witch, Angela, who offers to tell him about his future free of charge. She tells him about Arya and the dangerous path towards the future ahead. After leaving the house of the witch, Aragon is confronted by one of the Urgals, but Brom takes him out and scolds Aragon for disobeying him. More Urgals began hunting them, and they were about to be overrun, but Aragon uses the magical word and kills them all with a blast of blue fire. But Aragon fell unconscious from the strain of the magic, and Saphira arrived to pick him up. He wakes up after seeing visions of Arya and feels a terrible headache. Aragon asked him about what happened, and Brom told him that he instinctively used magic, which comes from the dragons and flows through riders. Brom told Aragon to use only magic as a last resort, and warned him against using it before learning to withstand the effect. Then, he teaches him some of the elven words to help him use the magic properly. Since the incident in the town, their path was not secretive, so Aragon had to learn to fly. He climbs on Saphira and rides her well. He uses magic to help him see what she sees and practices some moves. But the joy of flying doesn't last long. He spots some Razaks who are about to attack Brom and goes into the forest to help him. They help Brom kill the Razaks, but Saphira sustains a minor injury. Brom helps fix his dragon and scolds Aragon for endangering Saphira. Aragon later discovers Brom's secret and confronts him about it. Brom reveals that he was once a rider and his dragon was killed by Morzan a rogue rider who allied himself with Galbatorix. Meanwhile, at Durza's dungeon, the leader of Urgals arrives to report their failure. Durza kills their leader and sets a trap for Aragon. He casts some sort of spell that appears in Aragon's dream, which shows Arya calling for him. Despite Brom's plea to see the big picture and make Arya's sacrifice meaningful, Aragon decides to rescue her. He orders Saphira to ride and they arrive at the dungeon. He uses the cover of the night to go in and discovers Saphira, who warns him to leave her and go. But Durza appears at the gate and gloats at Aragon's youth and inexperience. They fought each other, but Aragon was outmatched. Durza is about to pierce Aragon's heart with a spear, but Brom arrives and saves his life at the cost of being mortally wounded in the process. Aragon shoots an arrow into Durza's head and he disappears as Arya gets free from the spell. Arya helps Aragon carry him but they are about to be stopped by a couple of soldiers. With the help of Saphira and the unknown archer, the three of them get out of the dungeon. Brom spends his last moments telling Aragon that Durza is not dead, and the only way to kill him is to pierce him through his heart. Brom dies on the back of Saphira, who offers to give him prideful death by giving him one last ride. Although she is not yet able to breathe fire, Saphira breathes some kind of crystal on his tomb which will preserve his body. After Brom's farewell, Aragon takes possession of Brom's magical sword, Zarok, which belonged to Morzan 
and they prepare to continue their journey. Suddenly, Ari falls to the ground because of Durza's poisoning. She shows Aragon the way to Vardon and passes out. Aragon confronts the unknown archer, who was following them, and he reveals himself as Murtaugh. He offers to help Aragon and leads them to the Varden. At the same time, Durzan reports to King Galaptorix about the failure of the mission. Although Durza failed the first mission, the king was lenient as he wanted to use this opportunity to destroy the Varden once and for all. Therefore, he tasks Durzan to lead his army into their hideout. Aragon and Murta are presented in front of Ajihad, the leader of the Varden. Aragon proves himself by calling Safira, who was carrying Arya, but Murta gets arrested after Ajihad reveals that he is the son of Morza the traitor. Ajihad takes Aragon to his armor, where he is joined by Arya, who has fully recovered and is dressed for battle. She helps him in wearing his armor, and shows him the armor the people have also prepared for Safira. Every one of the Varden's soldiers gets ready for battle, and the Urgals appear to begin the battle. Aragon gets rid of all his doubt and gets ready to join the battle with Safira, who is now able to breathe fire. I'll take that as a yes. After the foot soldiers clash with the Urgals, Ajihad gives an order to Aragon, and he descends upon the enemies with Safira, who burns most of the enemy soldiers. Although many soldiers kept being added, Safira burned all of them and forced Durzan to join the battle. Murtaugh also joins the battle after freeing himself and proves himself to the Vardens by helping some of them in the battle. Durzan conjures up a dark dragon on his own and fights with Aragon. Safira gets seriously injured in the process, but Aragon finally defeats Durzan when he finally pierces his heart, making an unexpected move. Aragon uses a dangerous spell and saves Safira before he passes out. The next morning, Aragon wakes up to find a fully healed Safira, who takes him to see Arya. She was already on her way to Elsamera to lead her people in the upcoming war. Aragon speaks with Arya, and they depart from each other, promising to see each other again. At the end of the movie, Galbatorix slashes his hanging map of Alagasia and reveals his black dragon. 